What's your favorite bad movie? Mom, have you seen my peanut butter? High five! Hey, your head, <laughs> Jeez, that's not cranberry sauce. Don't watch me. <laughs> Some movies are bad. Some are just plain rotten. I'm not bad. I'm just filmed that way. Bad Movies Among Us! Last time, watching The Room on Bad Movies Among Us. Lisa gets her red dress. Everybody betray Johnny. Claudette is cash-strapped again, while Mark suffers reefer madness. Stay tuned for the conclusion of our story. So we go back to our apartment. Lisa's doing some sweeping. She is getting ready for the party. She's, she's doing the most work we're ever going to see Lisa doing during the entire film. And when Mark just shows up for a little pregame tailgating. You get more half-naked Greg Sestero here, which is always welcome, as Lisa and Mark just start to get frisky right before the party, but sadly Michelle shows up to ruin the fun, forcing them both to toss their shirts back on, which, again, so we only get a few moments of that Greg Sestero abs, but they're there. Mark decides to leave, having been awkwardly confronted on his affair, but Michelle stays around to gossip. In all fairness, you know, she once again tries to get Lisa to tell Johnny about the affair, but Lisa is not interested giving us a little I want the world speech, just so that we will all know where her head is at. Meanwhile, Michelle finally points out the elephant in the plot line, and calls her straight out on it, saying that she's acting just like her mother, which is... <laughs> yeah, she is. Well, not just like her mother, because like I said, her mother is older and wiser, so her mother has already ruined the lives of men. She's ruined these men's lives, and she's like, yeah, that was fun. That was fun and everything, but, but where's the paycheck? It should be a one, two, three process. Have fun, ruin men's lives, profit. This is an underpants gnome kind of affair, and Lisa doesn't understand that. She only gets the part one and part two part, where she has fun and ruins men's lives, but she is completely forgotten about the profit. Don't worry, Claudette will show back up to talk to her about this in just a little bit. But right now, Michelle's still here, and she's still trying to be the voice of reason. She still continues to try and convince Lisa to tell Johnny about the fair, but just way too far out of the bubble of insanity to obviously make any kind of difference. Unable to get Lisa to listen to the light of reason, she does the only other reasonable thing a girl could do in that time. Sexy pillow fight. Yeah, you know, they just grab some pillows and they have themselves a sexy little pillow fight. In scene. We go back to Johnny and Mark, who are still jogging, except this time no football in hand. This, to me, leaves several questions. Like, okay, so we just saw Mark, uh, you know, back at the apartment getting frisky with Lisa. So, were they, were they both jogging, and then at some point, Mark just left, unexplained, went made out with Lisa for 25 seconds or so, and then, ca then came back to go jogging with Johnny again? And no, no word as to what, what happened to the football, which is pretty sad because the football is pretty much a starring cast member at this point. But they drive back to the car so they can drive back home to the apartment only to immediately turn back around the minute they get home because Claudette has arrived. I told you she'd be here to, again, try and convince her daughter to see the light of reason and get some money. Well, that's why she's here. We get, we get more of the same old back and forth between Lisa and Claudette. Same old, I don't love him from Lisa. She's telling it to her mom straight. Same old, you should marry him for the money from Claudette. Except this time she's not so shy about saying it outright. Straight up telling her daughter that love isn't important. And that she should think about her future and her financial security. And honestly, Claudette is already ringing Johnny pretty dry. I'm not sure there's meat on them bones for, for two. But Claudette is going to be Claudette. She's not super convincing or anything, but apparently she's just convincing enough to convince Lisa to get back to work sweeping the floors and planning the birthday party. So we, of course, we get more transition shots, this time of Johnny just walking home, apparently just in time to make it to his party. He comes inside and everyone just shouts surprise for a party that has been really publicly planned at this point. And we get to see Johnny, and what I think, what I think is supposed to be, like, Johnny at his highest point. It's his birthday, right, he's got all of his friends, as well as his girlfriend at this great party, and he's about to get married next month to his future wife, Lisa. And Denny's there, and he manages to score himself a nice 33 seconds of screen time. So we do get another skyline transition with some pan flute, really just so we can go back to the same party. We do see Denny again, this time for just about seven seconds, just enough time for him to walk directly in front of the camera blocking the shot. And then we get a little bit more casual talk. And while we're all counting our Denny's, Lisa goes ahead and suggests that everyone go outside for some fresh air, which, sure, why not? 
Everyone immediately leaves the party, except for Mark and Lisa. Lisa just closes the door behind everyone. She just immediately starts to get physical with Mark, and he he seems to see the error in the logic, like, what are you doing? Everyone's here. But she's like, no, they're not. They're outside. <laughs> so this is obviously a solid plan. But oh no, something unexpected happened. Steven uh, has come back into the apartment to see what the happened to the two of them because he, they just said let's all go outside and these two people are not here. So Stephen Stephen comes immediately back into the apartment to check on them and finds them making out on the couch. Stephen, by the way, is essentially well, that's to say he he is a movie surrogate for Peter. There's no essentially about it. Because of that concussion, Peter wasn't able to stay for the remainder of the filming, and thus Tommy Wiseau had to replace him, and that's why we get this character of Stephen, who has no name given in the actual dialogue of the movie, and you would have to look up the credits to find out his name, and has never been appeared previously in the movie, just appearing and confronting them on their affair. It's kind of as though Peter had done it in spirit. That's that's also why you're going to see Stephen's dialogue as being one of those people who already seems to know what's going on and is actively trying to get them to tell poor Johnny about the affair. And likewise, that's why when Mark actually drops that leave your stupid comments in your pocket line on Stephen, he's acting as though Stephen and him have already had all this engagement on the subject is because he was originally written for Peter. And this 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 apparently made the line pretty difficult for Greg Sestero to get out. That in addition to it just being such a weird line in general and apparently he had to consciously like bring to mind all of the conflicts that he had been having with Tommy Wiseau up until that point in order for him to be able to actually muster the emotion to be able to get this scene out. So Mark tells Stephen to leave his stupid comments in his pocket, and then he leaves, right? Michelle and Johnny re-enter the scene as Johnny clamors about how wonderful of a party this is, and how amazing Lisa is for inviting all of his friends, and it was such a great idea. <laughs> and this, this is while uh, Stephen is just standing right next to Lisa, so he just looks over her and shoots her these eye daggers. And Lisa reiterates, yeah, it's hot in here. And she's like, well, thank you. I love you so much, honey. And, you know, reiterates how hot it is. And everyone everyone just goes back outside. And I'm still unaware of how this apartment works spatially because now everyone has appeared in another room from what we've seen before. There's all these curtains that are up. Danny crosses the camera, this time not blocking shot, getting himself another two seconds of screen time. Meanwhile, Johnny makes a big announcement that he and Lisa are expecting just about as quickly as Lisa. Lisa tells Stephen and Michelle that she was lying to Johnny to try and make him happy. I'm not sure if this is like some third destination that we've gone to and then we're coming back from, or if this is part of the apartment, or what. But uh, Lisa and Stephen, who is definitely a surrogate for Peter, they just they try and beat the same bongo as before. Tell John, tell, tell John, John to know what's, let him know what's, what's, what's going, going, going on. on. You're gonna drive crazy, crazy, crazy. crazy. what are you crazy. doing? Crazy. How could you crazy. do this to him? But Canadian bacon girl, she ain't having none of it. You know, she just, she calls everyone back inside to, she just, uh, she calls everyone back inside for cake. So everyone goes back inside for cake, right? Uh, but apparently Mark had overheard Lisa and Tommy and the big announcement, and now he's just been sitting around, and he's getting all suspicious about what's going on. So Mark, he just comes right up to Lisa, right in the middle of the room, and just confronts her right on the spot. Trying to ask if the baby is his or not. Very loudly. All in the center of this very small group of people. And Lisa, she, she understandably gets really upset with him for just asking if the baby's his. Right in the middle of the party. And so she, she just straight up slaps him. And she slaps him hard. Well, this gets Johnny's attention. He gets up. He's like, what's going on over here? The two of them get into a pushing bath. And Johnny is understandably upset as he leaves the party. Never to be seen or heard from again for the next 20 six seconds. So now that Johnny has left the party, apparently Lisa's decided this is her party now, so we transition scene to her and Mark just openly sexy dancing. So I guess the moment that Johnny left, she just decided it was her party, and now she's openly having the affair in front of the entire party, and just nobody seems to care. And what's great is they're not the only ones that seem to be getting in the mood either, because we get to see Stephen and Claudette dancing together just behind them. Remind you, Stephen is supposed to be Peter. Peter was a psychiatrist or psychologist, right? So 
Be- Beater had a good job, right? Claudette is working to lock it down. She's going for number four or five. I, I forget at this point how many I, I was able to count her as having. I, I think I had her at four or five husbands throughout the movie from, from just little bits of detail. Well, like I said, Johnny, he only left for all of 26 seconds. So he comes back and he sees Lisa and Mark dancing. And he gets physical with Mark again, this time pulling him away from Lisa and shoving him. And Danny tries to get in between them. And as a consequence, we get another 14 seconds of screen time with Philip Haldeman. Thank God. So Johnny curses Mark out before crying betrayal and and running off upstairs. And apparently with all the fighting, everyone must have just decided to leave the party, which is actually really reasonable. Like, if I saw this all going down, I, I'd be bouncing. This is not a party I want to be at any longer either. But apparently Claudette does stay around to help clean up. And Johnny, meanwhile, has held himself up in the bathroom, and he refuses to come out. Lisa's mom once again tries to convince her to make things right, insisting that Johnny's a reasonable man, and he's going to come out, and they're going to discuss this, and they're going to work it all out. Claudette leaves, and when Lisa tries to talk to Johnny, he calls her the B-word, which really just shows how upset Johnny is, because he don't curse at her. He don't curse at his Lisa. This incredibly small slight must be just way too much for Lisa to handle, as she apparently just instantly calls up Mark, so that she can run away to comfort and safety, and she just immediately calls up Mark, so that she can run away to the comfort and safety of those manly packs. Johnny overhears the conversation and bursts out of the bathroom to confront her, demanding to know who she's speaking to, because again, she's just having this affair of just like feet away from him all the time. And when she refuses to tell him, Johnny, he goes for the good old tape recorder. Bam! That's set up and pay off again, folks. And that's for some seriously solid storytelling. Johnny pops the cassette into a different cassette recorder to listen to it so that he can have proof of the thing that he just heard about and that he's actively been hearing about for the last four or five days. <laughs> he, he hears the details of the cassettes, and that's when he cries out again that Lisa's betrayed him, and he does this as passionately as he can as he throws the tape recorder against the wall, breaking it into pieces. Lisa proudly tells him that she's leaving him. And let me just say, finally, girl, like goddamn finally, Finally, it's time for Lisa to leave, and so she do leaving, and Johnny alone, and moaning, and we get a flashback montage to all of good times, like Lisa tie on head, or standy kissy time with Lisa, or city kissy time, <laughs> it's, it's all too much, and Johnny just starts throwing and breaking things before just falling desperately to the floor. So now we have Johnny, rolling around, on the floor. He has gone from his highest moment to his absolute lowest. Everyone has betrayed him. His friends have betrayed him. His future wife has betrayed him. Everyone betrayed him. Rolling around on the floor, in his desperate moment of sadness, he finds the gift that he had given to his future wife, Lisa, the red dress. And he grabs it, and he he brings it to his face. To wipe away the tears. And so he can sniff it a little. You know, give, give it a little sniff. Just a little sniff, you know. Give it a little sniff, you know. Just smell it a little. Just so we can smell her a little. Right. And he wipes away the tears. And he smells the dress a little. Just a little. Before passionately. Emotionally. Bringing it down over his chest, down, down to his loins, where he thrusts it just a little, and then again he thrusts it just a little, and one more time, he thrusts it just a little, he thrusts that dress just a little, thrusts against it just a little, because he loved Lisa so much, and it's all too much for Johnny. The emotions are all too much. He rips the red dress apart. Right. He reaches over for the small lockbox that he put Chekhov's gun in from earlier. For that setup and payoff. For those classical plot points. He reaches for that gun. He grabs it. And he brings it to his lips. Before he pulls the trigger. And we hear the bang. And we see the blood. And Lisa and Mark, they come running in. So emotional. So full of emotions. Lots of emotions. You know, just crying over Johnny's dead body. 
you know. And, and Lisa, devastated, she turns to Mark for comfort, asking him, you know, I've already lost Johnny, but I haven't lost you, have I? But Mark, he's too broken now. He shoves her away 